Hi, this is Brady Volpe with Nimbleness and the Volpe Firm. Today, I'm going to talk about how to fix your coax and internet when you have problems with coax and your coax connectors. I've previously discussed that coax cable is really fragile. To some, this may sound totally crazy because we hang coax cable in the air, we bury it in the ground, we run it through walls, it gets driven over by cars and walked on by people. So why do I say it's fragile? Let me explain a little bit in more detail by first talking about the physics. But first, please do hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell if you like the videos so you get notified when we put up more videos. So checking a look at the image in the upper corner here, we can see a cross section of coax cable. You won't be able to see it here. This piece of coax cable here, we can see there's a center conductor, typically made out of copper. Dielectric shielding, it's this white stuff here. The dielectric shielding insulates the center conductor. Then on the outside, we have a wire mesh that can be made of anywhere from like one to four layers, depending on the type of coax cable. And what that does is that insulates the center conductor. So the center conductor is where all of our RF signals, our radio frequency center signals are transported on. Dielectric insulates it from the outer mesh. The mesh keeps our RF signals on the center conductor, and it also keeps all the rest of the electromagnetic signals that are radiating through the air from getting on the center conductor. Then finally on the outside, we have a plastic jacket, which basically protects everything on the inside because this coax cable gets exposed to a lot. In this case, this orange heavy-duty coax cable typically gets buried underground. So underground cable gets a bit heavier jacket than this black cable, which normally runs indoors or could get hung through the air, which we call aerial coax cable. It's a little bit thinner. On a thinner cable, we have a little thinner center conductor, thinner dielectric, and a little less shielding. An important aspect when we're talking the physics of this is that the ratio of the center conductor to the white dielectric to the shielding creates something that we call a 75 ohm impedance or 75 ohm resistance, so to speak. That impedance, that characteristic impedance of 75 ohms is really important to everything we do in the communications industry for broadband. In other industries, they may use 50 ohm impedance. In the cable industry, we use 75 ohm impedance. I kind of like to describe that like a 75 mile per hour highway. 75 mile per hour highway is designed for cars traveling 75 miles per hour. The highway is a certain width. We have lane dividers. We have things on the side to make sure that people can pull off when necessary. And cars are happy. Everyone's driving 75 miles an hour down the road until we hit some road construction. Road construction is a problem. It causes people to slow down. It causes traffic accidents. It causes road rage. No one likes road construction. It's a big problem. Road construction for coax cable is a similar thing where it causes the 75 ohm impedance to be something other than 75 ohms, just like road construction causes 75 mile per hour to drop to a lower speed. Cars are no longer driving 75 miles per hour. In coax cable, RF signals know how to traverse a 75 ohm coax cable as long as it stays 75 ohms. When something changes in the coax cable, that changes that ratio of the center conductor to the dielectric to the outer metallic shielding. When that ratio changes, this is no longer 75 ohms. And that causes the RF signals as they're traveling through and they meet that road construction, that non-75 ohm impedance. Those RF signals, instead of traveling at the normal pace, something's going to happen to them. So when that characteristic 75 ohm impedance changes, something's going to happen to those RF signals. Frequently, we see the signals will get reflected when that impedance changes, and we call these micro-reflections. So when these micro-reflections occur, signals traveling to and from your cable modem will have problems arriving to and from your cable modem at the right signal level. So how do we, how do we understand this? How do we see and, and interpret what is damage to a cable modem? We can break these up into two primary types of impairments. One we'll call pinches, the other we'll call rubs. 
And this is really a very oversimplification of the two major impairments, but let's just break them down and explain them. So let's start with pinches. A pinch is anything that occurs to a piece of coax cable which causes the dielectric insulator to become compressed or crushed. And when that happens, it's no longer 75 ohms. It's something other than 75 ohms. Like when, when road construction happens, the, we're no longer driving 75 miles per hour. We're going to see the signs that say, hey, please slow down. Caution, road work ahead. Some common causes of pinches in a coax cable would be, you know, like, for example, in your house, if you try to make a sharp bend around the corner, that's, a, that's an actual pinch in the cable. Coax cable's perfectly fine if you make small bends in the coax cable. You can do that to go around a corner. Just don't pinch the cable because when you pinch the cable, we're actually causing that, that dielectric, that white dielectric in here, to bend so much that now the distance between the center conductor and the, the metal, the actual insulator that's on here, they get closer together. When they're closer together, it's no longer 75 ohms. Other things that can happen is if you drive over or walk over a coax cable enough times, you'll slowly start to compress that dielectric. Again, it's no longer 75 ohms. A lot of times we see people like to staple a piece of coax cable up along a side of house or along a side of house to keep it tucked under the way. Maybe even we'll staple a piece of coax cable along a baseboard inside our house to make it nice and clean. Driving a staple into a piece of coax will again start to dent and compress that dielectric. One staple, not too big of a deal. Two staples, now we're starting to create those small micro reflections, but a staple every foot or every couple of feet, now we're creating a lot of micro reflections. And when your cable modem transmits a signal to the CMTS, every time it sees one of those staples or any type of small dent in a coax, it's going to have a little bit of its signal reflected back to the cable modem. And enough of those micro reflections will have substantial amount of signal reflected back to the cable modem. Eventually, if enough of that signal is reflected back to the cable modem, the cable modem may not have enough transmit power to have its signal reach the CMTS. The same thing occurs on a downstream. When signal is coming from the cable operator down to the cable modem, if there are enough micro reflections, there may not be enough RF level reaching your cable modem so that you get good signal at your cable modem. And this may be the cause for having slow speeds, bad voice quality, may even be enough to have your cable modem go offline and come back online again. So this can be an exp this can explain a lot of reasons that you're having issues. It can also impact your video. If you're having a set-top box or you're watching over-the-top TV, it can be a reason that you're having video problems as well. The second type of impairment is called rubs. So a rub is any type of abrasion on the coax that actually rubs right through this outer protective coating. When the outer protective coating is worn away, we can now get water into the coax cable. Water is like the Achilles heel for RF signals. Water will attenuate RF signals. It'll, it'll reduce the signal power of those RF signals. So now we may not get enough RF signal into the co cable modem again just because it's attenuated by water. And when your cable modem transmits signals back to the cable operator, it has to transmit through that water. That the water will attenuate those signals, so now your cable modem has to transmit at a higher and higher level in order for its signal to get back to the cable operator. So your cable modem may not have enough signal to transmit through all that water to get back to the cable operator again, causing low speeds, slow speeds, maybe even causing your cable modem to go offline and offline, offline and online. So if you find out, you know, every time it rains, you have slow speeds, or maybe when it rains, your cable modem goes offline. You may have an issue where you have abrasion in your coax cable and water's getting in, and it could take hours or days for the water to dry out. There's a secondary impact with water getting into your coax cable. Water's very corrosive, and so that corrosion in the coax itself, inside the coax, will 
also cause issues. It causes its own micro reflections and depending where, where it occurs can cause other issues within the coax itself that can become permanent, forcing you to have to replace that coax cable. What's more challenging with dense water and micro reflections is that they are extremely difficult for technicians to identify. Most test equipment that technicians use is not able to identify small dents, water ingress, or corrosion. Handheld test meters only identify large impairments. It requires specialized software called PNM that, that looks at a cable modem's pre-equalizer in order to identify these impairments. So what's the solution? If there are speed or modem issues that one believes to be coax related, which is oftentimes the case, a visual inspection of the coax can be one way to find obvious dents or rubs, that, those abrasions that I'm talking about. Especially look for coax cable that has been stapled to the side of the house or maybe even a telephone pole. If you don't see anything obvious, replacement is the next step. Just just replace the cable and see if it gets better. Companies also make equipment called pressure test kits. These pressure test kits attach directly to the drop cable and they inject a high level RF signal into the house. A handheld meter that works with these will quickly identify any defective cables or connectors which should then be replaced. Connectors. An important note on connectors. There are three primary types of F connectors. These little guys here. These are F connectors are the typical connectors that you see on pretty much any type of coax connector around your house. The little threaded connectors that go onto modems and set-top boxes and anything else on a piece of coax cable. The three main types are twist-on, crimp on and compression connectors. All these types of connectors you can find in any big box stores or online. Crimp on and twist on connectors really should be illegal in my opinion because they will eventually cause problems in the future for you. And twist on and crimp on connectors are often used by contractors and also homeowners because they're really easy to install. Crimp on connectors re require this type of tool right here. It's a, just a crimp and the connectors put on. It's a cheap tool and a cheap connector. Twist on connectors require this type of tool, just your hand, because they just twist right onto the coax connector. And twist ons are arguably easiest to use, and that's why they're so frequently used. And they're also so frequently poor to use because they just twist on to the coax connector. Really, really bad connector to use. The best type of connector is a compression connector. You can also get these at big box stores. They require two specialty type of tools. A stripper that properly pulls off the connectors or the coax. So it pulls off the outer shielding, sheathing. It pulls off the uh, metal insulation and it also pulls off the dielectric to just the right length, it goes on. And then once the connector goes on, you use this connectorized tool here to compress the connector on. That compression connector gives you a really good mechanical and electrical connection with the coax. Highly recommend compression connectors. You can get them online and you can get a complete kit. Put the image up here on amazon.com for about 25 bucks, comes with 20 connectors. If you're in an emergency, you can also get them at Home Depot and Lowe's. Costs a bit more, but they are very good connectors. Just make sure you're looking for the compression type connector. So if you're experiencing slow data speeds or modems flapping on and off, be sure to expect, inspect the connectors and the cables around your house may not be surprising that the issue is in your own backyard and something you can fix right away yourself and do a dramatic improvement to your cable modem speeds and issues you may be having. So thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get future videos we upload. Thanks for watching.